my favorite part of the Percy Jackson series is messaging Red and saying, hey, I know how much you hate them, but <laughs> try to stay calm. Uh, stifle your this. rage for but a calm moment. Down. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Red, calm down. Cage the beast. Uh. She tried to kill you just for asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very special Oops All Percy Jackson bonus episode of the Overly Sarcastic Podcast. Uh, we're your regular hosts. Uh, I don't usually talk as part of the podcast. Hello, it's Indigo. Uh, I'm also joined by Red. Hello. I, uh, notorious Percy Jackson hater, as everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be dragged to this one. <laughs> and Blue. My fire alarm went off twice in the process of starting <laughs> recording this podcast. We're doing great. Look, we didn't ask to be a half <laughs> And we have a, a couple extra special guests, experts in the field of Percy Jackson. Uh, guys, go ahead and tell, tell us who you That's are. That's a lot of pressure. All our general adaptations. <laughs> who we got? I'll rise to the occasion. My name is Mike Schubert. I host the News Olympian, a Percy Jackson podcast. Woo. But uh, I've only read each book once, so expert is a stretch. But the the concept of the show is I never read them as a kid, so that's why. But I'll I'll, I'll take on the expert thing. I read them with a fine tooth comb. Mm-hmm. Uh, we yeah, got- I'm uh, Dominic Noble. I'm sort of a booktube adjacent. Yeah, creator. Uh, booktube I... adjacent, Dom. You're OG booktube. Yeah. You saw some credit. You founded yeah. booktube, oh, basically. I, I, I can't be a part of it because I've read a shockingly few amount of books is what I've learned in my, my time here. But... So you would think, but as as someone established as book podcaster that's read each book once, you can find a way. That's more than I've read most of the books because I've only read the original <laughs> set of Percy Jackson books, which... I mean, samesies, so... It's well, also same, yeah. like one or two Unless you count the spinoffs. We're going to yeah. be mostly answering Q&A from you, the listeners, on this podcast about Percy Jackson but before we get into that uh, why don't we just go around the table and say what pieces and variations of Percy Jackson media we've consumed to kind yeah. of give our give our credentials here uh mine are easy so I'm just gonna kick it off um I read the books as a kid I read the, the five Percy Jackson series books and uh I've seen the movies and because I edit Dom's videos I've seen the TV series as well <laughs> Uh, right, right, hit us. Yeah, I uh, had a similar experience. I had to like look up the dates because I remember I got into it before the Titans Curse came out. So it, it was just Lightning Thief and Sea of Monsters. And I remember I was just working under the assumption that it was going to be a trilogy. So when the Titans Curse dropped, I was so excited. And then I read through it and I was like, well, that didn't answer most of it. I mean, it was good, but like Kronos is still out there. I was like, oh, more. We're getting more. So that was cool. And I looked that up and it came out in 2007. So I got into this early. I must have been like 10, which is the perfect age to be reading Percy yes. Jackson because uh, you are exactly the same age as the main characters, which I think was really the move. Um, and uh, yeah, I read through all of them. Uh, I started on the Roman series, the the sequel stuff, and I, I sort of lost interest. It wasn't written first person. It just didn't grab me as much. Um, it was fun seeing Percy from the outside because from the inside perspective of Percy's head, he's just like always panicking all the time. He's just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Everything is scary. Nothing makes sense. And then from the outside, it's like, that's Percy's Jackson, son of the sea god. He blew up a <laughs> volcano that one time, slayed Kronos. He's so scary. I was like, yeah, that's my boy. Put some respect <laughs> on his fucking name. So that was cool. Um, and uh, yes, I've also regrettably seen the movies. Uh, I've seen the first one like three times at this point. Um, Why? <laughs> Because people keep putting me on podcasts to talk about it. Oh, for enough. <laughs> I need to do my homework. Um, and uh, I've listened through the musical, which is good. And I just watched through all of the show. Well, all of season one of the show, which is all that exists right now. Uh, and I liked it, but we're going to get to that, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Mike, what are your the- credentials? <laughs> So, yeah, as I mentioned, I started the New Olympian in 2021, and it was me going through, and still is me going through everything for the very first time. So I never read them as a kid. I started reading them, I guess I was, uh, time, I was 29, Uh, so very much past the target age group. But I still really enjoyed it, never felt like I was reading a kid's book. I would highly recommend, if adults have not read them, just to read them. Like, if you want, like, a fun beach read, instead of reading, like, Romance She Romanced and Murder He Murdered, like, just read young adult books. It's great. Like, I very much enjoyed the books. So I made my way through all of those, and then I saw the movies, which were awful. 
And then I watched the TV show, which was fantastic. I was fortunate enough where I got to do like some press stuff as well. So I got to like interview Mm -hmm. some people in production. I got to understand a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that went into the show, which has been really fun. And then very recently I watched the musical or I allegedly watched a slime tutorial allegedly Uh. of the musical. (laughs) Allegedly. Uh, Mm -hmm. I tried to do Mm -hmm. the thing like where the New York Public Library is supposed to have a recording of anything that's ever been on Broadway, but they apparently didn't have an archival for it. Um, So yeah, I've seen the musical and and then some of the spinoff books that are still like Percy Jackson only I have read. So things like Demigods and Monsters, The Demigod Files, The Ultimate Guide, nothing that would spoil. But I, <laughs> as of yesterday, just started reading The Lost Hero, which is the first book of Heroes of Olympus. So I'm only oh, yeah. just barely getting into the sequel territory. Mm. All uh, right. Well, and, uh... I, I read one of the books once. That was, uh, <laughs> now, back when I was a, a baby f- fledgling YouTuber, uh, Percy Jackson was the first request I ever actually had from a fan. Back when I had like oh, 16 hmm. subscribers, so oh. uh, so I covered the first two movies, uh, mm. and then th- I kind of just kept reading the books because I'd gotten addicted to them at that point. Mm. Uh, yeah, they're very so, grimy. Yeah. Then, uh, God, I, I don't know. I think the only other claim to Percy Jackson do I have is that I spent a good like three hours talking to the people who run the camp in New York last VidCon. Oh. Vid- first VidCon we all went to. Um, oh, yeah. I think that was in Austin actually. Okay. Camp Apple at Austin, yeah. Should've I've met it. those folks as well. They are incredibly nice. They're the really nice great. People. Yeah. So yeah. sweet. <laughs> so then I, I, I back when there was Storylines on YouTube. I had this one character who I then sort of retired into the Percy Jackson universe. Which, so like, I'm I I think I'm just here as the sort of token casual. No, I think there's a lot to discuss considering the show just came out and mm-hmm. it is of course an adaptation, which is very much your speed. That's my, yes. that's yeah. my easy to get. I I mean my favorite part of the Percy Jackson series is messaging Red and saying, "Hey, I know how much you hate them, but <laughs> try to stay calm and <laughs> stifle this. your rage for but a calm moment." Down. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Red, calm down. Cage the beast. Uh, it was very fun. Trying to kill doing... you just for asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun doing a little Ovid research for the uh, for the discussion of the uh, episodes because. Uh, well, we'll get to it, I'm sure, but they they change a little bit of how they do Medusa, and you were like, so how legit is this? And I was like, oh, well, you could dig into the original like Latin if you wanted. You're like, maybe. And I was like, so I dug into the original Latin just yes. a little bit. Um, <laughs> I have to be careful what questions I ask Red, because she will do several hours of research. <laughs> no, it was, it was barely an That's hour. That's the joy. Coming. I mean, I've had Red on a couple yeah. times to do mythology episodes, and the, the amount of, of resource, because after I finish the books, I do like myth specific episodes like here's all the stuff they talked about what's the longer versions and it was the first time we had to do two episodes <laughs> about <laughs> one book's worth of myths it was perfect to I, be I, fair I, well it was like, i think it was like either book four or five where there was a ton of stuff so it like was four, yeah. it was yeah four which was like super valid but mm. lots of lots of research i appreciated it i podcast easily because it's hard to make me stop talking what's your history with percy jackson movie struck than red yeah. <laughs> One of nature's podcasters try and take my crown <laughs> yeah uh, for me, my experience with uh, with Percy Jackson started when um, the first book came out and when my, my parents were trying to get me into reading, they're like, oh, like, you know, Little Blue, there's this book called The Lightning Thief. And I'm like, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> and then two years later, um, Titan's Curse came out and I was like, oh, wait, this this sounds like it's cool. And then I went back and, and read the first three of them. When the fourth book came out, I had the great pleasure of, of meeting Rick Reardon on the booktuber at, at one of the Whoa. local libraries in, in the city that he came to, uh, which was super fun. He's so nice. Uh, I got to hear him talk, got to take a little picture with him somewhere uh, in the archives of, of old, old, old photos on my dad's uh, computer. There's a picture of me in a little camouflage coat standing next to Rick Reardon. It was great. Aww, uh, no. And then I read the fifth book when it came out. I I felt myself distinctly like over the comedy hill on that one. That was the first time I noticed like, oh, these are no longer for me. And that was a crushing realization to come to as a like, what, 14 year old? I'm like, oh, have I aged out of this? I I am zero years old functionally in like media even standards. If you, but. It, it's tricky with, with Percy Jackson because even if you are the same age as him, you're still kind of aged out of the humor because he's such a 90s kid, even though the books came out in the 2000s. Like, yeah. I, my, the first time I realized was in the first book, he's at Camp Halfblood. And it's like, I kept expecting people to jump out and say, not. I'm like, oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, okay. You are the son of Hades, not. <laughs> not. Wow. Yeah, like, yeah. A whole different um, kind of mythology but, uh, you have to know to understand the humor yeah. of <laughs> the 90s. 
Um, but uh, it was a crushing realization to be like, oh, I, I would have laughed at this a couple of years ago, but I, I no longer find this funny. Um, but I was like, it, it's okay. It's still really good books. I enjoyed them a lot. Um, I didn't read any of the spinoffs or, or subsequent series. Um, I think I got like two pages into the Roman series and I'm like, nah. Uh, I watched <laughs> the first movie when it came out. Yeah, exactly. No. Didn't watch the second. Uh, and then I am now here having seen the series. Uh, I'm ready to talk about some Percy Jackson. So with all of our various backgrounds established, how about we hop over to the audience Q&A and start uh, getting into the details here? Woo-hoo. Yeah, well, these questions come from our lovely listeners over on Discord and Ask OS Pod. We asked you to submit Percy Jackson questions, and boy, did you provide. Uh, this first one is going to come from one of our lovely patrons, as well uh, a few others. Usually we just do one patron question at the top, but because so many of you had Qs, we're going to give you a bunch of As. Uh, this one comes from Ebony Andy. For the Percy Jackson episode, to all, we were all either assigned or self-assigned ourselves uh, our godly parent when we were in our youths and reading the books for the first time. I was under the impression that for most of my childhood that I was a kid of Apollo. Which god would you want to have as one half of your parentage, and what powers do you think they would give you? We have to do this. We have to yeah, just get this out of the way, oh, right? Yeah, <laughs> this was such a funny thing, because of course, I felt that itch, but I kept running into the problem that I like both my parents. <laughs> and didn't really conceive of either of them as being, like, swappable out with a Greek deity of any kind. Uh, so I unfortunately reached the conclusion, like, no, this just wouldn't make sense. Uh, but Hunters of Artemis accept all takers. So that was definitely my cop-out <laughs> answer. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay. Yeah, I've done a few of the Percy Jackson quizzes and stuff. Some more simple, like, I think the official re and one is, like, one of those you can exactly tell what answer you're going to get. Like, what's your favorite <laughs> color? Do you like hanging out at the ocean or the mountain? <laughs> uh, but I've taken a few, and I've gotten Poseidon multiple times, which I think uh-huh. tracks. Good time. But nice. I think I've also had some other ones that I've been interested in. Like, I think there is always an appeal for Artemis. There is always an appeal for Athena. So, I don't know. I don't feel, like, as strong as you for say like a harry potter house or something but Mm -hmm. i would say for now poseidon but i'm still you know always open to seeing how things develop as i continue my way through the series (laughs) don how about you I have been wearing a Hecate necklace all the way through the Percy Jackson reviews to see who notices because they can (laughs) sons and daughters of Hecate can still do magic uh so that's that's so I want to, if I want to turn people into guinea pigs, that seems like the logical one to go with. So that's 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 what I've been. I've not not done a quiz or anything, so maybe I'd get like Dionysus or some loser like that. But uh, I'm going with Hecate for now. Nice. I this is gonna sound obnoxious because it is, and I'm leaning in for the purpose of this answer. My family on my maternal side is from Athens. We go fucking back, y'all. So if I'm not representing Athena, I am disrespecting my bloodline. (laughs) Very fair. I feel like as a kid I would have said Athena, but yeah, now I've I've grown. um, One of those, you know, losers like Dionysus would probably be my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) Just because, like, powers-wise, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got tummy issues. I'd like to be able to drink and feel better about it. <laughs> well, he also, it. he'll choke you with vines and shit. So he's Dionysus, not consuming yeah, that's me too. Well. I feel like, I feel like, mind. he's yeah. got some yeah. good powers Turn you into dolphins. On, yeah. You can have a little a fun lot. with it. There's yeah. a lot of, it, it's, it's the like wild magic of the mm, <laughs> Greek pantheon. True. Yeah. The, joy, true. the joy of Poseidon magic, if I am having him as my godly parent, mm-hmm and we're going with the Percy Jackson powers, is not only do you get the cool stuff, like water powers and stuff, but you also get the cool, like, mundane ones that are really helpful, like your clothes don't get wet and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine all the time I would save by just, like, taking, you know, not having to dry after taking a shower. You never have to have the wet sock feeling. Like, yeah. ooh, baby. Ooh, that's like, Being able to breathe huge. underwater would do a lot. A oh, lot it'd be of incredible. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Also, the horse stuff. You just, yeah, yeah, horse stuff. That's pretty cool. And horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah. they do also lean into the more, like, older Poseidon as earthquake god thing, which I think is fun, because when he sets off the volcano, they're kind of like, yeah, he can kind of just do that. Uh, Let's not (laughs) piss him off, maybe. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, does, does, we only have one son of Poseidon in the series, but the whole point of it is... Well, Tyson. And all the other Cyclopses, but... Uh, Half-blood mortal human Demigod, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Like, do we have, is it confirmed that every son of Poseidon gets all the cool water powers, or is Percy a special boy? So it isn't because Procrustus is also a son of Poseidon. Uh, Yeah. And I feel like there's a couple other heroes turned immortal monsters. Procrustus is half-giant, half-god, isn't he? Uh, maybe? 
It's been a hot minute. Uh, According to what I would would not know. (laughs) Percy Jackson, he's regular human sized. Like, he's just like a dude. Everyone has like a human form, yeah. And there's also that guy uh, whose name escapes me, but he is half giant, and as long as he touches the earth, he can't be killed. Um, oh, right. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, is he in the sequels? Because I don't remember him. No, he's, he's he, in, I think he's in, one he's of, in the like, arena in Battle of the Labyrinth. He's got the right. cool like, waves etched into his teeth and the tattoos and stuff. Yeah. Sick. Oh, yeah. He's one of the uh, guys that Her- Heracles fought at some point. Uh, he had to basically kill him by picking him up off the ground and then crushing him like a... So what it can. Does <laughs> Polyphemus show up in Sea of Monsters? Antaeus. 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 Name. And yes, is. Polyphemus does show up. He is the yeah. like main bad at the end of Sea of Monsters. Well, because Sea of Monsters is just Odyssey older. Redux. Yeah. 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 That was the most one-for-one parody, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, the first book, Lightning Thief, is like an overland journey, and in book two, they stop pretending. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think cool. it was Titan's Curse after that, which was more mm-hmm. original, but also probably the least engaging of the original book series, I thought. Hmm. Titan's Curse started playing around with some more, like, b- broader concepts, because that's when you start getting the Hesperides as, like, the main mm. thing, which is kind of neat. Again, it, it was sort of uh, Labors of Heracles light, because it right. involved the Nemean lion uh, and a whole bunch of other, like, Herculean trials for, for them to cross. Uh, but yeah, that that was definitely... Probably, if Sea of Monsters is the most one for one, uh, Titan's Curse is one of the least. Yeah. But yeah. Well, we, we've drifted from the other premise of the question, so we need to go hit us with another. <laughs> I suspect that, that will happen many times over the course of this episode. Uh, but this question comes from Mr. Mystery to all. We know that the movies are not the best critically, but what are some of the adaptations that they made that you preferred? For example, I quite liked the Clicky Pen Sword as well as the movie Medusa scene. So, oh, positive compliment the movies. Uh, I will say that That's the use of Lady rough. Gaga's poker face is incredible, yeah, and I would fun. no notes on that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, Nathan Fillion is a fun Hermes in the true, second one. He true. is so different from the vibe of what actually happens in the book. I feel like Moody Lin Manuel <laughs> Miranda hits way more accurate. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Nathan really Fillion is still Lin-Manuel very Miranda's fun. Portrayal. Yeah, I was very happy with everyone with how dunks Lin-Manuel on Lin Manuel Miranda. He is legitimately everything I've seen him in. He's been good. He's in the new Ducktales, and he has yeah. such a fun time. He's just. He's, the, I think I think people dislike his his off camera cringe, mm-hmm. and they yeah. let that cloud that he yeah. is incredibly talented. Kill the part of him. <laughs> Kind of suffers cringes. from like the effect of well, big studio has realized that his style of songwriting and performance is connecting with people, so now we're gonna just try and imitate mm. that and put that everywhere, mm. and it becomes an exposure therapy issue. Like, yeah. true. you can only hear so much of it before you're like, ah, yeah. it's a Lin Manuel Miranda sound. It's definitely not his like. fault. It's not his <laughs> fault at all. He's still yeah. very talented. Yeah, and and <laughs> yeah. he did a. a damn good job like I was expecting him just because like sometimes you, you're like oh this person disappears into the role and sometimes it's like that's an actor like that's that's fully Christopher Walken there's like there's no character there that's just Christopher Walken Lin Manuel Miranda I worried would be the case with that but it's like no he's fucking Hermes he's in it he does a great job but yeah. we're talking I, about the movie we're talking I, about I, the movie. Was, yeah. I was somewhat blinded with his scene because all I was thinking was oh god they're doing the gosh I love my mortal children so damn much thing again mm. which was my main complaint with the way they portrayed yeah. the gods in the Disney Plus adaptation was it's you know like I said I don't doubt that the gods did love their children in the books but it felt like it was a subtler way that they showed it or it was a more complicated way whereas every bloody god in the series just like oh god I wish I could hang out with my boy well not Athena not yet actively he's like what if actually except for yeah yeah Yeah. 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 I think that like the way that they portrayed Poseidon and Hermes is like true to the way that the books uh, to be clear we're talking about the show still we'll get back to the question in a minute but like uh Everyone I, I trying think... to avoid talking about the movies at all possible. We're stalling because there's <laughs> nothing good to say yeah, about I, I'm sure I'll think, but, uh, I'll think but of something. But the thing is, like, Poseidon being like, I want to hang out with Percy, I want to help him, but I'm actually prevented. Like, that, that's fine. Uh, and I, I love his actor. I think that he did such a good job of getting the vibe Toby across. Stevens in the show. Yeah, and the yeah, stuff that they added it. with him and Sally, I thought that was possibly one of the best scenes of the show. Great. Uh, great. And I liked, because the thing is, when we meet Hermes in the books, I think that they managed to shrink down in microcosm his entire personality in the books where he is very much like, what's up? I'm chill and fun. How do you do, fellow kids? And then as soon as somebody brings up Luke, he's like, listen, you don't need to get hurtful like that. Okay, look, I fucking tried my best. All right, it's really hard to be a parent. And I was like, perfect. We got all of that in the space of about five minutes. I yeah. love it. And I, I love the part where it's like, I stole his keys. And then it's like, he knew I stole my keys. He left us a note. <laughs> it's just like, good. Yes, he's the god of thieves. This is all pitch perfect. Um, so the movies. Um, so the movies. Yeah. I'm, so I'm just I did Googling think of the movie thing. looking for a scene that I didn't hate. But... I, I, th- I remember one thing. Uh, 
because I, I did like a, a live watch along at one point on Twitter when I was watching uh, Lightning Thief for like the second time for some fucking reason. And I did remember noticing like in the context of the movie and the way they're fucking up Luke's characterization, there was one moment they added that I thought was effective for what they were trying to do with him. Uh, which is, of course, in the books, Luke is a little bit kind of cackling villain and a little bit, like, deeply sympathetic, and I like that the show leaned much more on the deeply sympathetic angle, and I think that was a good change. Uh, but in the movie, they went more, like, cackling villain kind of thing, especially at the end. And he's got the bolt, and he's got his winged shoes, and he's flying over New York, and he thinks he's got Percy, like, out of commission, so he's just about to start his reign of terror. And there's a civilian helicopter flying overhead, and he just worthlessly, like, aims the bolt at it before <laughs> Percy tackles him out of the sky. And I was like, that is good villain characterization. That is a good way to show... He's not like, and now I shall destroy the hostages. He's just, as far as he's concerned, he's already won. This is just for shits and gigs. And he's immediately like, I'm going to start shooting lightning at random people. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like no pretense of I'll do a better job than Zeus. Just immediately, like, let's just start killing dudes. Uh, and I thought that was a, an effective way to characterize the way they did Luke in the movie. It was probably the only thing that they did that I thought was, like, decently okay... Like a little bit. Mm -hmm. Luke I studied at the civilians or bonus points driving school of <laughs> divine smiting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like the problem is the few things that I enjoyed from the first two movies were like things that were just then done better in the show. Like mm -hmm. Stanley Tucci as Mr. D is kind of fun in Sea of Monsters, but then Jason Manzukas as Mr. Oh, D is so like good. absolutely perfect yeah. in the TV show. Let so Jason Manzukas play Greek characters. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> wait for deserves. him to go off the fucking chain in the in the later seasons because he's, good. he's he, all that potential is there, but he doesn't really do anything in the Lightning Thief. He's just mildly intimidating, gets Percy's name wrong a lot, and it's like just let me see the madness behind his eyes. I've seen him on Brooklyn Nine Nine. I know what he's capable. <laughs> yeah, Titans yeah. Curse. Jason Manzukas Mr. D is gonna rip. It's gonna be really Sad. fun so i don't i really don't know if there's anything that i would say oh the movie did this better um but like there were still some things that were fun but i you know I, I just can't think of one we already brought up the sword but they put more effort into the sword transformation in the movie especially in the second one they actually see the whole motherfucker unfolding which is really mm, cool yeah. one thing i noticed about disney plus is aside from the first time, Percy is always uncapping his pen off screen. So it's I just kind of like pen, that. Off, hand off screen, sword yeah. in hand. It's like, and I usually, fuckers. I usually don't notice those kinds of things. Like, I, I'm very rare to notice bad CGI or stuff like that, but I noticed, like, they showed the transformation once, and it's always Percy uncaps it, we cut to someone's reaction, and we cut back, and he's got the sword. I'm like, you know mm. what? Spend Fine. your budget where you need to, but, like, also, goddammit, you're Disney, come on. <laughs> yeah, where's that Disney money going? <laughs> Yeah. I had, in the scene that I hated the most out of The Lightning Thief, which was all the stuff that happened in the underworld, I have to say, I liked the aesthetic they gave to Hades before they just turned him into biblically accurate Lucifer light, where they were, <laughs> where they were like, he's an aging rock star, let's do that. I thought that was fun. And to be honest, this might be a hot take, I like that aesthetic more than I like what they did with Hades in, in the show. Uh, mm. Because mm. in the show, he's very, like, he's kind of like, halfway to Disney Hercules, you know, used car salesman Hades. Um, Fuck, I didn't make that connection because I barely, I never, I only watched like the Disney's Hercules once, but you're absolutely yeah. right. He's got that sort of Somali quick talking. Yeah. yeah. But and the thing is kind like, of how he is in the book. Like, well, I, I feel what? like in the book he's Which book like, did you read? <laughs> the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I feel like he's kind of, I feel like he it, like he has a little bit of the sass, but not like full fledged. Like I yeah. always felt like when I had read this that he was halfway between Hades, the video game Hades, and yes. Disney Hercules Hades. Where like he had mm -hmm. the intimidating element, like when Percy says he's the only god that really felt like a god to me, and then he does still have like the little bit of like quirky humor, and then he also has, which I think tracks for both of them. He's disgruntled at Charon for asking for a raise in the book, and I feel <laughs> like that checks both of the boxes. But he never yeah. felt like full comedy all the way to. Disney's Hercules Hades and I think that that's the problem in the show is that in the show I still liked him and I think they did a good job of of the of the humor but we didn't get as much of the intimidating yes. so I can that's... see red why you would think it felt like just shy of going full Hercules because mm -hmm. they didn't have the like empowering thing I think what they were trying to go for the show is kind of what he is in the first book too which is like 
you just assume that Hades is going to be the bad guy and Percy th- assumes it and Chiron assumes it and everyone's mm-hmm. like, well, it's clearly Hades. And I think that the show leaned a little too far into just being like, well, let's just make him so what you wouldn't expect to where I think some of the intimidation was lost. That yeah. was there in the book, but wasn't in the show. That was kind of my vibe because I really liked that in the books, Hades is the only god who doesn't bother to pretend that he's like not a god under any circumstances. Like, I don't remember. It's been a while since I read them, but I feel like it's like he's he's like lost. Large, still doing the toga He's in his 12-foot form and he's wearing yeah. a cloak made of human faces. Exactly. Yes. So like, he, he's not fucking around. He's like, I'm Hades, Lord of the Underworld. And what I like about that is that in the book, when Percy first shows up in the Underworld, Hades does not disabuse him of the notion that he's the main villain until he starts talking about the helm. Like, Hades is not in it to to impress him or change his mind. He's just like, give me back my shit, you little asshole. And he's obviously he's not going to be nice about it. So when they when they turn that around in the show... I think of the gods we met in the show, he was the one that just kind of hit me the least, just kind of washed over me. Uh, I I think the way they did Zeus was incredible. I think Poseidon was top tier. Hermes was good. Dionysus was fine. They just didn't give him very much to do. And then with Hades, I was like, this is all right, but he... I need to believe that this is the kind of Lord of the Dead Ghost King character that mm-hmm. Nico can have all of his issues about That's later. That's the thing. I'm holding off judgment for now because I feel like people are doing the thing where... They're they're looking at full series Hades and uh. not like book one Hades. And I don't know that you're like I I think you're still right, but I think like mm-hmm. Hades is at his angriest in the Demigod Files and in book five. Mm-hmm. Like when we really get the Nico stuff into play, that's where he gets like really angry, angry, especially when we get into more like the backstory of Maria D'Angelo. So I'm like waiting to see how this iteration does it once we get to like truly angry Hades before I say like I don't know that they're going to hit it right. and maybe it's just a lightning thief versus later series stuff so I'm in the like mm-hmm. let them cook pause yeah. thing to see how they do it before I get angry at them for messing it up no of course yeah, yeah. it's sort of like we're, we're we're dancing around talking about the TV series so let's get a couple questions in that are just about that uh, oh, talking about points, wait, wait 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 <laughs> I do want to give one one point on the subject of the underworld. In the movie, one thing they did I really liked, Persephone, Rosario Dawson's Persephone, speaks to Cerberus in Greek. I mm. liked that. She says, like Fia, get out of here. <laughs> I think that also uh, she she looked great. She seemed to be having a good time. She shouldn't have been there, but I'm, she yeah, was having she a was good there time. In summer. The way that they wrote <laughs> yes. Persephone is horrible. And the accidental and then, implications of like, oh, we're getting the pearls because Persephone uses them to bring in all of her lovers who she fucks. And yeah, it's like, this is for children. Grover. <laughs> including Grover. And yeah. Medusa. But I don't think, I fully believe the screenwriters just did not consider the implications of having one of the pearls be in Medusa's custody. No. I, no, I just no, genuinely no, no, no. believe that they were just like they need to get it from Auntie M's Garden Home Emporium. Lot they didn't think food got into juice. Like, oh yes, I used to date your dad. Um, yeah. Uh, to be honest, yeah. I didn't hate that line mostly because Uma Thurman was Uma. just clearly having a uh, fucking okay. good time. Yeah, that, that's another one where like Uma the was so was campy, it was great. Yeah, the iP- oh, the iPod <laughs> is really fun. The like, most the unrealistic like, part of that is that it wasn't too covered in fingerprints to be usable. <laughs> he like, wipes it on his pants first and then yeah, he tries it. Like, eh, okay, There's we're some good. some fun stuff in yeah. the movies, but the show just like did it better. So it's yeah, hard to say it's preferred. But yeah, that Medusa scene, Uma's great. She's just vibing. Uma is I was kind of expecting her to do more stuff than just be like, maybe you should open your eyes and look at me. Like I was like, are you going to do anything evil? <laughs> just going to say that. Anyway. <laughs> Sort of related to that, uh, thoughts on how they handled monsters like Medusa and Echidna in the Percy Jack- in the Disney Plus show from uh, Cayman. Um, thoughts on, on on the Greek monsters that show up in season one? I mean, no complaints about Echidna the way they handle it in Disney Plus. They oh, made gosh, like so yeah. awesome. she was Fantastic. fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Suzanne Carter's like great. I think the way they did Medusa was interesting because it mm. looked like they were going to do something else, and then it looks like they changed their minds because. Um, Reardon almost almost always defaults to using the Ovid version of the gods when he's um, when he's drawing on storytelling. Ovid is one of the best consolidated sources of a lot of Greek myths. Uh, he he's got some authorial bias and he has some ideas that don't seem to have shown up in in earlier versions. But generally, that's what Reardon defaults to. And Ovid is the first source that I could find that has the idea that the Gorgon Medusa was once a beautiful mortal woman who was slighted and and horribly hurt by the gods and now she's she's this monster um gorgons are very old they show up in the theogony in the big family tree of all the monsters they are just offspring of monsters uh the idea that one of them is mortal and the other two are immortal i think is a little bit older than than ovid but the idea that one of them used to be a normal human woman that's different um 
I think in the art before Ovid, you were starting to get hot gorgons. You're starting to get beautiful women with snake hair, uh, which is not the same thing as this was once a normal ass human lady who became Girl a boss gatekeep gorgon. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, Lou, what have you done? <laughs> uh, what cannot be undone? <laughs> Hey, I got that reference. Anyway, um, so I, I think I think that Reardon was like, okay, we're using the Ovid version. The problem is, in the Ovid version, Poseidon assaulted Medusa in Athena's temple. Like, they they usually translate it to be vaguer. They, they'll be like, oh, they lay together. But I looked up the Latin, and I was like, that word has connotations, unfortunately. Uh, I think that's that's what I came to you for advice from. It's like, I yeah. am walking on eggshells here, Rick. Can you, like, what exactly happened between these two in the version he's looking at? Because yeah. I know there's several different versions of everything, but it, yeah, from what you told me, it was pretty explicit. It was in... pretty cut and dry. They, they yeah. tried to tone it down when they translated it various times, probably because they just didn't want to, you know, use really uncomfortable words. But like, in the version that Ovid told, uh, it was a dual injustice. Poseidon assaults Medusa, and Athena curses her. Uh, and it, it's just a huge dick move. And the problem is Poseidon and Athena are the parents of our heroes. And if they are complicit in anything like that, uh, they immediately become irredeemable, basically. Like, th this is just awful, awful, awful. So, I was worried, because... Before I watched the show, you uh, you came to me with this, and I was like looking it up, and I was like, well, I kind of hope he doesn't imply that Poseidon did that, because I don't think any amount of, you know, fun dad moments is going to make me yeah. forget that we're we're canonizing the Ovid version. So when I watched the show, I was kind of pleasantly surprised, because in that one, they tone it down to just make Athena the bad guy, where it's just that Poseidon is complicit in not protecting her from Athena, but... In this version, Poseidon, Poseidon loves Medusa. They're like, she's his mortal lover. And, and she's she's like, he didn't protect me. That's why. Mm. Which is, I think, if you're going with an adaptation of the Ovid version, that's probably the softest you can make it by basically being like, it was a consensual relationship. They liked each other. But then the dick move that Poseidon did is not stopping Athena from giving her snake hair. They, they did make me a bit uncomfortable with their use of the term survivor. Because she did, so it's like, so what are you if you're not a monster and you're not a hero? It's like, well, I'm a survivor. I'm like, oh, that has very specific meanings in current that, usage. Yeah, that, that worried yeah. me too. Um, I, I will say, I think I can understand, like, where, okay, if we're going to do this, here's what we need to do to make it work after the fact. And the choice to basically make post, uh, Poseidon chill in this and, like, not culpable, like, not innocent, but he's not the, the perpetrator makes sense within the context of, okay, if we're putting this all on Athena, we're just going to make her an angry character, which matches what they do in the rest of the show. There's some mm -hmm. pretty consistent Athena slander. Yeah, it's I don't love that. It's not terribly out of character to the sources because you read stuff like Sophocles, Ajax, and and even other uh, other plays and other stuff from the, the classical period. Athena is mean mm. she's a she's a mean lady like we, we <laughs> like her nowadays because of the uh, various effects of like renaissance and and post-enlightenment well, um, portrayals I actually think, but i think we uh, like her because of the odyssey where she's an unconditionally heroic because she she plays her role as the the guide and helper of heroes in the odyssey and like odysseus is her specialist boy yeah. so if you focus on that i think the odyssey coming back into more of like the forefront of of greek myth consciousness as opposed to like ovid where she is just consistently awful mm. um definitely makes like our cultural space more willing to accept virtuous kind athena whereas they're is a lot of precedent for Athena being shitty. It's not in the places that we normally look. And again, it comes on really strong in the show, maybe too strong in a way that we're not like equipped to to recognize and categorize but i think i mean it wasn't what in they the do Ryden, it's like, eh, see what it wasn't in the Ryden books was my issue with it it so wasn't she was yeah. fairly freaking chill in the book so it's yeah. like yeah if you're adapting greek mythology as a whole you can pick and choose which myth you want to use to make any of the gods look like assholes yeah mm, yeah uh, yeah so. i guess the only time athena in the books wasn't super chill was when she was like way overprotective mom mother-in-law to Percy where Which she just had the like stay away from my daughter vibes so yeah. it's not like completely out of left field but yeah we definitely don't have in the books the Athena that we get in the show where she's like you actively me, so letting a monster straight up let you die. Yeah. I think right. the other thing is that we have not yet gotten to see Athena in any capacity. Like, I, I don't think we saw any goddesses this season, which threw me for a loop a little bit when I realized that. But um, I don't, do you see it? I don't think you see any in the book. Well, that's the thing. So. Like, I, that's a true adaptation. Yeah, yeah, there's like 80% like of the gods that we saw in the show we didn't see in the in the Lightning Thief. Mm, so. True. Mm. Uh, but like, I don't know. Uh, 
because we we hear about Poseidon secondhand, and of course Percy starts off very cranky about him. And, I love uh, how much he hates him at yeah. the start, <laughs> and that also tracks with the book. It does, yeah. And I, the thing is, I was sort of watching the response as episodes went up, and it, within the first couple episodes, the uh, the fans were like, "Oh man." Poseidon's so bad. He sucks so bad in this show. And I was like, we're seeing this from Percy's perspective at his absolute lowest. Mm -hmm. Can we trust that the show is going to do something? And of course, we get the scene, the flashback scene with him and Sally, which immediately does a ton to be like, oh, never mind. I love this guy. (laughs) And then we get to see him and Percy hang out. And we're like, never mind. I love this guy. He's dad of the year. It's great. And that's skillful writing to make us do that turnaround from like neglectful father. Let this shit happen to Sally. How dare he? And, you know, all that stuff. Uh, But we haven't gotten that with Athena. We have only seen stuff from Medusa, probably the person in the world who hates her most aside from Arachne, uh, and the thing that happened at the Arch, where it's like, I don't think Athena should have done that. I think that was bad. But yeah. there is a possi- there are ways you can write this that make this work. Yeah. She could even be like, I, you know, I, I knew that you could handle it if you were really my kid. You know, that kind of shit. Like, That's true. There's, mm-hmm. there's ways that you can write this, but because we haven't seen Athena and she hasn't had the capacity. I mean, she's not going to be like, I, I'll justify myself so you like me. Like, Athena's not the kind of character to ever do that. But, like, there are ways that this can be written in a way that makes it feel like not a horrible tragedy that Annabeth is connected to her. Uh, but we just haven't gotten that yet because it doesn't happen in the book and they didn't add it in the show. So yeah, I on the subject of monsters, I I was a little iffy on how they handled the chimera at first, and I liked it with the reveal of when it's like the the cobra gills kind of like that's not what they have, but like the cobra part kind of spreads out from put, the lion's mane. I thought it. that was a really cool little reveal because at first I'm like. Yeah all right, this is just a lion with horns. Like, I mean, yes, that is kind of what the chimera is with the scorpion tail, but like, give me, with the snake tail, but like, come on, give me something. Um, but I, I liked the little like flip out, like the Nedry snake from uh, from Jurassic Park kind of <laughs> I, effect. I heard mixed feelings about the chimera. Uh, sorry, I heard mixed reviews about the chimera because some people said like, oh, that's nothing like it was described originally. And some people just like, actually, that's quite creative. I was just like, yeah, it's yeah. Good, pretty cool. Yeah. That's the thing. It's, it's, it's described as having a lion body and head, goat head and snake tail. And instead they were like, we're going to combine all three animals into basically one animal. So it is lion shaped, it has goat horns and it is snake textured with the hood. I thought it was a clever way to fuse the animals without literally yeah. just stitching them together. Right, but you don't want it to really... look like one of those, I don't know, like slide across like children's yeah. games where it's <laughs> yeah. like, ah, snake yeah. pants, lion head, goat <laughs> torso. Ooh, like it's gonna yeah. look so cheesy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, the, the gold standard of chimeras is the one from God of War 3. It's just yep. so good as a design but this one is is probably one of my favorites for the inventiveness within a pretty narrow band of possibilities <laughs> yeah definitely mm-hmm. yeah well still relating to the show this question comes from dorian gay to all what are you guys' <laughs> thoughts on the lotus casino episode of the show everyone i talked to about it absolutely hated it and i wanted to know your thoughts so lotus casino yeah. episode i'm in i'm in to defend this episode <laughs> i know a lot of people <laughs> disliked this one there were certain aspects that i didn't love i didn't love and i don't know this is like the lotus casino episode's fault it's more of like what led to it i didn't love that they like went in knowing what it was right yeah. away mm. i think that was like less a fault of like episode six and more of like what they did in the show but I mm-hmm. still feel like by the end of their experience in the casino, you still got the same like kind of vibe where like you still had the thing of them, you know, falling victim to the the actual like mist and, and myth of it. I didn't love that they knew it right away, but I did like that they utilized the Lotus Casino to give us the Hermes stuff. Because when I read the books, you get all of the Luke Hermes stuff at the beginning of book five. Mm -hmm. And it felt, like, compelling, but a little too much like, wow, we're really painting on the Luke backstory early on. Like, (laughs) let's get him more sympathetic before we kill him. And I I like that they brought that in earlier. I think it makes sense for the show to, like, establish Luke's motive from the jump rather than, like, him be bad and then be like, oh, and here's the flashback as to why. So I think it worked for, like, it will serve the series well. I think people are, like, misremembering the Lotus Casino chapters from the book. I think people are remembering it in the movies. They're fine. And in the book, people are like, oh, my God. Like, some of the complaints I saw were people like, they didn't even eat the lotus flower. It's like they didn't in the book There's either. no lotus flowers. <laughs> There's no yeah. lotus flowers eaten in no. the they book. They put that and shit then, in the movies. Yeah, and the movies people, are like, people are like, where's all the fun stuff? 
where they're playing the games. It's like they were in the hotel room for like a good portion of the time that they were <laughs> yeah. in the casino. Like, yeah. I mean, there was there was a clay pigeon shooter in the hotel room out the window, mm, which was pretty true. fucking bad. Right. I would have we're liked to have seen that. We're all being blinded yeah. by the Lady Gaga track that was blasting think, in the background yes. <laughs> and forgetting the actual events of that chapter of the book. Right. So, I, and like, I, I think it was so fun. I liked like what it did. Uh, the And then I think the ending is so fun. Like the, the driving out of the parking garage scene is so funny. Like the hardest I've ever seen. The most scene in the show. <laughs> it's so good. Like You shot can tell like, that boy's a New Yorker. Oh, so good. Shot like an action scene. So yeah. perfectly acted and special affected. I love it. When they it. got to like the, the narrow turn to go, I'm like, we've all been through that. We know what that's like. It's terrifying. It's so funny. I just, I really liked it. So I think like. Yeah. It was 20 years ago for me. <laughs> it was the most like, when I started the episode, I was very much like, Neh. But then by the end of it, I was like, they got it. They got all the important parts of Lotus. They brought mm-hmm. in the cool overarching series stuff. I was happy with it by the end. And I still think Levitating is a great song choice over Poker Face because Levitating has a lyric that says we fell into a rhythm uh, where like, I had a premonition that we fell into a rhythm where the music don't stop for life. And that is Ooh. very Lotus Casino. Why would yeah. you say something so controversial and yet so brave? I mean, <laughs> I, I also, this is not a listener Q&A question, too. but just like to put it to the group, what song would you pick? If you could pick any song to play over the Lotus Casino song, every scene, song I think... should be Muse Black Hole in every scene <laughs> of every movie. I would posit <laughs> the that one good sweet thing Twilight did. Are made of this could be good. That's, uh, get that sort of like... that's a fun one. It doesn't. It one. doesn't bop hard enough. I don't think. Like <laughs> we, we have to club remix it. Not you know? hard enough. Yeah, we get a club <laughs> remix. Dom, I wanna. I wanna actually throw this to you because in your your episode review of mm-hmm. the Lotus Hotel, you made a couple interesting points, and I, I wanna. I wanna give you the opportunity to talk about them. One being with like the the conversation of the movies with the show and the lotus flowers, like, where'd that come from? And then, like, in general, how the characters see various threats coming yes. a mile away. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> you did touch on that, and that was my biggest complaint throughout the entire series, is that not once does Percy fall into the same trap he did in the book. Every single time, it was Procrustes, the Lotus Hotel, mm-hmm. uh, Medusa, it was always, they see it, and they're instantly like, that's a trap, that's Medusa, I know this story. And, like... To, the, to be fair, like, in the books, they were in the opposite extreme, where it's like, have these guys never seen a Disney yeah. movie? Yeah, right. yeah. Or, they or felt... they, they, they know everything about myths, but then they can't, mm-hmm. like, put anything See, together. Yeah. That's so. the problem with the movies, where, like, uh, the how much Percy knows about Greek mythology fluctuates from scene to scene, yeah. depending on the needs of <laughs> the He was plot. like, oh, man, yeah. I totally killed the Hydra by ch- chopping off all its heads. Aren't I yeah. smart? I was like, buddy, <laughs> buddy. This is like Adventuring 101, bitch. Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Um, it just got a bit extreme because, like, I felt almost like the the Disney Plus adaptation was embarrassed of how gullible Percy was in the books, and that mm. almost felt disrespectful to me after a mm. while that they had to see through every single trap. And it's like, dude, did you did you read the book? Yeah. How, you know, yeah. I so guess I, they still fell for Chimera in the show because they didn't like kinda. they didn't like really see it coming. I think but they it figured happened it out. They were trapped on a train. They couldn't. They were trapped on a train with her. Yeah. But in the book, they were just trapped in the arch. Like True. it was. Yeah. So either not, way, there was not so much any any opportunity to see the trap coming it was just the trap was there when they yeah. started yeah. but like so, anything it's like a- well i i saw somebody's analysis of this um when i was just kind of browsing through the tag on tumblr as this was going on very divisive with the tumblr community you may be unsurprised Shocking. to learn <laughs> they're usually uh, so like, unified yeah it's it's wild um but there is this kind of underlying theme with the way that they adapted it for season one which is the things that go wrong are not our hero's fault and oftentimes, this is something that actually kind of bothers me. Uh, I have already developed strong opinions about the Avatar The Last Airbender show because of the way that they're rewriting the characters to have that be true in almost everything that they do. But in this specific case, I actually think it is tying into the overarching theme of the books, which is the world is not fair and the gods are making no effort to fix that. Because when it comes to the Lotus, because like, I also notice like the characters are a little too self-aware about all of the things that happen in the books. And part of that, I think, was a pacing issue. Because yeah. when you have when you're adapting a book to an eight episode miniseries, anything that's a little narrative cul de sac that basically starts and ends with the status quo in roughly the same place is kind of a waste of screen time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and almost all of the adventures in the book are like, oh no, this is a pr- an obstacle in the way that we got trapped in, and now we have to escape. And the reward is you get to go back on the main quest. It's line. a book of side quests, basically. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that part and of what they did. It's a compilation of short stories that he told his kid as bedtime stories. Like yeah. that's truly the first book. But, I mean, that's also yeah, how Homer would do. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So, so what that means is that when they were adapting it for the show, they did a lot to sort of pepper in important quest objectives in the side quests. So, like, you have to go to the Lotus Casino because Hermes is there and he will give you a shortcut. 
like that kind of thing. That's that's better than just, oh, this looks innocent and not bad. Uh, I did find it a little bit, yeah, that like the characters were like, oh, that looks like an important plot point. Let's go around it. It's like, God, mm, come on, guys, shit can just happen. But I think they struck a good balance of making it so that bad things still happened to them, even when they did everything right, down to them missing the deadline, which, if I recall correctly, was not in the book. Not, not in the book. No. No. I love that, yeah. that change. Yeah. And the fact that Ares is the one who directed them to the casino, Hermes is the one who kept them there long enough that the time mm-hmm. slid away from them. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, they truly did nothing wrong. The gods are the reason they missed the deadline the gods set for them, and they are still going to be the ones who suffer for this. I think the show did a lot of work to make us understand why Luke is like that and why so many people are going to side with him and also why Luke, uh, Percy and Annabeth are not going to side with him. Like, why this truly is a both sides issue. And when it comes to the Lotus Hotel and Casino, I think that they actually did a very good job of specifically executing those themes, even if it was at the cost of, you know, a, a weird little side quest in the book where basically the conclusion in the book is like, oh no, we fucked up. Like, we we did everything wrong and now we're almost out of time. Whereas in the show, it's... Would that be fucked we, up or what? Anyway, I'm Rick Reardon. <laughs> yeah, but then the show is like, we did everything right and we're still fully out of time. And mm-hmm. and that's that's heartbreaking because it really just highlights how unfair this world is for demigods. Yeah, I... I'm, and this may just be me get being too fussy, but like, did it bothered me that Hermes was the one that did that? Because mm. Hermes is the guy who usually gets people out of being stuck in a place. Like every time Odysseus was stuck on an island being bonked by a demigoddess, Hermes was the one they sent to to break that him out true. of it. That is well, true. Hermes is the guide of travelers, but he is also the god of tricksters. So. Kind and it's fits, also, yeah. I wonder how it will be addressed the next time we meet Hermes, because mm. I'd, I'd have to go back to see the exact conversation, but all they said was, like, we were with Luke, or we know Luke, and at that mm. time they weren't anti-Luke. Hermes does know that Luke is supposed to mess up the world, because he has the foresight, so maybe mm-hmm. Hermes, like, weirdly thought he was doing the world a favor. Apollo. No, uh, uh, Hermes is, uh, because Luke's be- mother, because May Castellan, May. is a seeress. And she had visions of the future that she doesn't oh, seem to remember, but mm-hmm. Hermes knows about. Yeah, uh, my bad. No, uh, yeah. Also, Hermes is crucial to the kickoff of Sea of Monsters because he gives them mm-hmm. the bag of wind. So they're going right. to need to talk to him again. Yes. And the, the, conf- yeah. the possible confrontations of like, yeah. so why did you make us miss the deadline, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Lim and I, Miranda? <laughs> I think I, I, I will agree with like with what Dom is saying is like it would have been nice to see I think just the problem because all of them were yeah. them knowing it like if if there was one that they like stumbled in and figured out that would have been fun um, yeah. but like individually it's like do I care that the crusty scene was wrong like not really but I think yeah, it's no, just because crust, fuck crusty like, that was the yeah. one I was just like yeah of course we don't need to have ten yeah. minutes of him going ergo <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think I think, on my bed <laughs> I think people just wanted to see like Percy figure one out mm-hmm. and I was feeling that but I did like that they did keep the thing true to the book which is like him figuring out it's Kronos and not Hades when he's in the underworld like they kept that so I felt better I think I was more like on edge about it and then we did at least get one example of Percy like being smart and figuring something out it wasn't exactly like he's fallen into a trap and worked his way out but Mm -hmm. he still did like piece together oh it's not him it's Kronos and I liked that but yeah I think if there was one of the things of the classic like we goofed but Mm -hmm. I totally see what what you're saying Red and I never really thought of it of like the next step of like the god screwing people over because yeah that'll give more credence to Luke's case that the gods Mm -hmm. suck so I think it's an interesting move and it helps balance out the fact that like we get a little bit more looking at Poseidon whereas in the book it's like he's not there until the finale where he's like good job son and in the show, they add more things he does that are good because we see him with Sally, which is layered for so many reasons, up to and including you must burn what you love the most to get the gods' attention. And she drops a lip match into somebody else's leftover <laughs> Sunday, and Poseidon is like, "Did you ring, baby?" <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. So yeah. good. Uh, so that immediately endears us to Poseidon oh, immediately. That's great. And yeah. then at the end. There's the add-on that they missed the deadline. The war is going on. And mm-hmm. Poseidon is like, I surrender. I yeah. wouldn't have surrendered under any of these circumstances, but I'll do it to save my son's life. So we immediately are like, great, two strikes in the good dad category. We are mm-hmm. on board. But they need to balance it out a little bit. Otherwise, we'll just be on team like, the gods are great. What's everyone whining well, that's, about? That's my mm-hmm. issue, and this may just be my headcanon, but are you supposed to like the gods? I think you're no, supposed I to like Poseidon. supposed to but... be a big 50-50. I always yeah. felt yeah. very in between of like, 
they're kind of good, they're kind of bad. And Dom, you said this earlier, and I fully agree. The movies, my biggest issue with the Lightning Thief movie, aside from many things, like the more like <laughs> the, other the, the more like thing. big brain issue was that Poseidon just like was way too nice. Like he was helping out Percy all the time, giving him advice, yeah. and then at the end, just like you said, he did the whole like, I wish I could have helped you, but I couldn't because I'm Doctor <laughs> Owen Hunt. Like it just would have been <laughs> so much better oh. if he was a little bit more of a jerk. And I feel like the show had him like. I would say a little more in the good guy than the jerk category. I'm glad the Medusa stuff made it vague enough where you could be like, maybe he's not super stellar. And with all the grumpy Percy stuff in the beginning, you're like, maybe he's not the best. Um, But yes. Gods gods aren't humans. That's that's the thing I think Mm -hmm. Raiden really understood is that you can't judge a god by human standards. Because yes, they don't help you out with the situation you're in. It's because they don't necessarily even see the situation because they are, they exist on a different plane of existence. They look human, but they're not human. So I I think uh, Percy coming to accept that about his dad is that yes he cares he just can't show it in a human way was something I respected the hell out of in the books Uh, Mm. and I don't think any adaptation Disney Plus or the films or any of that has really recreated that because they've always been like oh well they they it seems a lot more relatable. It's like they they do in fact love their kids in a very human way, but they can't interfere in a very human way. Well, the films do the ultimate cop out where they say that all of the gods are forbidden from talking mm-hmm. to their kids, yeah. which is and it's clearly like they added that in because it immediately makes all the gods fine and not culpable for anything, and they get to write Luke as a straw bad guy. But the other thing that happens is that they the fucking characters don't consistently remember this fact between scenes. Sometimes <laughs> we're like, can't believe the gods aren't helping us and won't talk to us. It's like, there's a fucking law on the books that none of them are allowed to, and you all know this because you told me that in the beginning of the movie! Anyway. <laughs> God, I hate those movies so much. Yeah. They're bad. I, the show did, I like that Zeus was just, like, true to form like he was a huge jerk in the show like <laughs> just, he just wouldn't the drop the war thing even when he knew it was over wouldn't address the Kronos problem I did like, like he rubbed it into but it's like now that you've surrendered like a little bitch Poseidon yeah. I guess <laughs> we can tell, tell everyone he's like everybody. yeah we'll, we'll talk about the gods after we announce your surrender so like I, I think we've got a thing of like some gods in the show so far have been huge jerks and some gods have not been as much that mm-hmm. I think like overall right now yeah. we're getting the vibe that like they're more complex I'm interested to see how the show develops if we're gonna see a little bit more of like that mm-hmm. individual people like Poseidon. Maybe that'll happen in Sea of Monsters when Percy's angry mm-hmm. that like he claimed Tyson so quickly and stuff like that. Like maybe that'll make us a little more like, hmm, what is Poseidon's deal? Yeah. Yeah. God, I hope they do. Uh, I- T- uh, his brother will. Uh. I think they will. I think I yeah. think they will. But it's gonna be. It, I, they can't like couldn't do worse. <laughs> also, R- just R. I. P. Lance Reddick. Oh, God yeah. damn, yeah. he was so powerful. He was God. only on screen for like three minutes, and he fucking killed he it. Owned it. Mm-hmm. Like, so my only complaint was like I can't imagine him being a fuck boy. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, he 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 nailed it. I'm glad yeah. we at least got the scene because yeah. mm-hmm. it, it was oh, yeah. incredible performance. No, yeah. it was, he, he never misses. Uh, we are coming up on time here, so I think we're going to do one last question before we exit the podcast stage left. Uh, oh, this one so comes. So few questions. <laughs> <laughs> so few questions, but so much to say. Uh, I think we, we covered a lot of questions that I just didn't need to ask because we naturally came upon them in this nice. course of conversation. Mm, so good work, everyone. Um, but this question comes from Obi, son of Obi. To all, you are a god, goddess, whatever, and. Uh, Thank you. You are pursuing a protagonist demigod. What monster or villain do you send after them to hinder their quest? Oh, oh God, I thought you meant coming after, like, Zeus coming after someone, like, That's turning exactly what I thought, too. No, I was like, no. which monster? Like, How do you send you to fuck? Yeah. We're just trying to murder people. No, no, no. It's much that's, oh, that's so much better. Good. Okay. So much yeah, more PG. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think the Manticore <laughs> is a is a strong case. I don't remember where it shows up. I think it's in like book three or four, but it's it's a strong contender because you've got the scorpion tail, the okay. the wing, the bat wings, and then whatever the the hell like base it's made out of. It's a great pursuer. It can immobilize enemies, uh, and it bites and claws. So I think that's a good all around uh, choice to to pursue uh, a hapless hero with. Okay. I'm gonna let them think they've escaped by letting them get to their escape boat. And then, boom, Leviathan. <laughs> you go, oh, you're, you've escaped to your tropical island where you're going to live out your retirement with your money. Nope, it's a giant turtle or something. I don't know. Nice. I just think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Sphinx because mm. not only do you have, you know, the big bestial attack form, but 
if I'm going with the Sphinxes that I know, which is like Harry Potter Sphinx and Percy Jackson Sphinx, they will ask them a trivia question and then attack them if they get it wrong. So not only are they getting <laughs> mutilated, but they also have to live with the regret of like, oh my goodness, if I just remembered the capital of Delaware, I would be dead. And they're just stuck in Asphodel forever, remembering that Percy they Jackson couldn't recall that it was Dover, Delaware. Participating on an episode of Jeopardy and losing. <laughs> Oh, I would love to see a Sphinx running Jeopardy. That would be so fun. It'd be so good. It's, <laughs> Sorry, it's, it must be in the form of a question. Prepare to die. <laughs> yep. Now I get to eat you. <laughs> you didn't say what is, so. <laughs> Ooh, there's so many good ones. Sphinx the is double. up there. I'm kind of in like the echidna version of like if you had the Nemean lion, but it was just a house cat and then it became big lion, be pretty tight. But I don't know that that's what you, yeah. would, you know, that just means I get to have a Neme- the, the, the Nemean lion like as a pet, which is more for me than it is really to hinder the heroes. I think we should have cats with manes. Somebody should get on that. Yeah. yeah. This is once again not you got the scissors you can make it happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's just a, a mostly shaved cat. This yeah. is different. This is once again not the point of the question, but something I guess to discuss is I the the comparison between Echidna and the Furies is really an unfavorable comparison to the Furies. I did not find them very threatening, whereas Echidna just really had the energy. I was a little too distracted of, of by how doom. <laughs> yeah, I did know because the Furies, because like Mrs. Dodds in particular, were had creepy old lady energy in the books, which I don't think they recreated in the Disney Plus show. They're just no, they were there. too. They were yeah. too glamorous. They really felt like Delaware's yeah. Prada bad guys, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. which was a good problem for me to have because I was just mostly just distracted. <laughs> but. uh I would send a big snake. I think that there are there's a lot of big snakes in Greek mythology. They're always mm. fun. Uh, Python is the OG, I think, yeah. uh, killed by Apollo. You could throw in all kinds of weird superpowers on that thing because some versions, the oracle was theirs first. So, like, you know, a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, Gaia has a tendency to just crank out big snakes whenever she needs to kill somebody. So I, I think that's always fun. Um, yeah. yeah. Respect. I mean, you could always send. Is it Scylla or Charybdis who's the whirlpool? You can always I mean, just whirlpool. send a whirlpool yeah. after a guy. Scylla you know? is the lady whose bottom is made of a lot of dogs. Mm. Uh, Charybdis is Scylla. Uh, she's well, like Scylla was the one that had like long necks that would snatch sailors off. The... Yeah, that's her bottom yeah. half. That's yep. I, she's a I'd she's never, a lady like... with a lot going on on the bottom. She's, yeah, a lot of top, a lot of bottom. There are a what? lot of Greek. Yeah. There's a lot of Greek monsters that are of the format of like top half is hot lady, bottom half you don't want to know. Wait, hang on. So the Scylla. When she swoops down on Odysseus's crew, that was just a big lady with a. She's she's up on the cliff. Yeah. The next reach down from there. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that's so just... much worse than any ad- anything I've <laughs> yeah. ever imagined. That's she's awful. just vibing in there doing a crossword. <laughs> Literally in Greek, skilos is just the word for dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! They might be well, more sure. snake-like in Percy Jackson, but it is yeah. It's I yeah. think they still keep it as the bottom half is just lots of heads going mm-hmm. like na 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 na. Uh, well, they don't. I don't. Do they? I can't because they they skip uh, Scylla in the movie adaptation. I'm trying to remember yes. in the book. Do they? Do they fuck I, with Scylla? I think they, they avoid do. her as much as possible well, because she she's like yanking people out of the sky. Right, you don't the zombie like, sailors, see the her, but it's more of they're like yeah, the heads it, kind of like swoop in rapidly and pick mm-hmm. people off yeah. one by one. It's yeah, but oh, also like, I, she lifts, she gets Percy Jackson by the backpack and he does a right. sort of slow motion. Whoa, falling. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. right, yeah, and then the boat well, explodes underneath. Yeah, mm-hmm. 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 we've all seen it, the exploding boat. <laughs> Well, well, that's why you don't take a fucking iron slide into any situation that <laughs> yeah. requires I'm it not so exploding. I'm so excited for more Clarice in season two. It's I gonna be really loved fun. how they did Clarice her in the good. show. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to come like back how... and do a season two episode because we are coming up on time for the podcast. Yeah. And I fear that any discussion of hypotheticals for season two could run us into <laughs> double time territory. So I think... Uh, <laughs> Thank you to our guests for joining us. Many monsters we would send where we given the opportunity to be a villain in the Percy Jackson series. Uh, it's a good thing that we're not. Um, Blue, you want to take us out? <laughs> sure. Thank you so much for listening to this bonus episode of the Overly Sarcastic Podcast. We'll be back next week with a regular episode. Until then, feel free to check out uh, our channel for more regular videos and the channels of our lovely guests. Um, thank you so much, Mike and Dom, for, for joining us. Uh, Mike, real quick, where can people find more of your stuff? Sure. So you can find The Newest Olympian anywhere pods are cast just by searching for The Newest Olympian. You can go to our website, thenewestolympian.com, and then we're at Newest Olympian on social media. And then if you want to find me individually, I'm at shubes17, S-C-H-U-B-E-S-1-7 on Twitter and Instagram. And then my website is just shubes, S-C-H-U-B dot E-S, if you want to hear about all the other podcasts that I make, because I make objectively too many. <laughs> Fantastic. And Dom, Podcast where can we find more of your stuff? Right 
Uh, well, most of the main things on YouTube, so if you just type in uh, Dominic Noble into the search engine, I have just finished a episode-by-episode episode breakdown of the Percy Jackson series as it came out. So I, I say a lot of statements that I then had to eat humble pie on <laughs> as they did the thing later. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I did it in a, in the character of a snobbish, holier-than-thou former Ravenclaw, so that's that. It was a very fun. funny running bit. I appreciated that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's it, it was very sort of 2010 YouTube that I was trying to call back to. Uh, I but think I also, we, rage we videos. Need- that. <laughs> no, I, I love character sketch comedy, and uh, yeah. it's a shame that a lot of YouTubers have start. just moved away from it. Yeah, it's a lost start. yeah. Man. Are you really living if you're not comping yourself into the shop wearing different wigs? Like, what's exactly. even the point anymore? Yeah. Well, I, I, Terrence's stuff I had to sort of move away from because he also used to be like a casual misogynist and stuff. And I, was, I suddenly realized uh, over the years, like, that's not as funny as I thought it was. Like, he's so, an asshole, but he's not a no, dick. No, but the joke know? is I don't mean it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I would be ironically an asshole. I was like, let's just maybe tone that down a bit because. YouTube um, commentator Terrence probably. No, 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 no. We love, the <laughs> we love redeemed Terrence 2024 edition. Yeah. Well, since. Uh, since his lord and master creator turned out to be a massive turf, he's kind of had a come to Jesus moment. So. <laughs> come to uh, Zeus moment. Exactly. Right. Come yeah. to All right. Zeus, yeah. Well, come. until next time, I've been blue. I've been red. Oh, I want to I, I want to claim a color. Sorry. Oh, I want to oh, be. Uh, can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm going to be yes. beige from now on. Can I, be, can I be tickle me pink? Absolutely. Perfect. Great Nobody's name. claimed either of those if you believe it. Perfect. All <laughs> yours. And this has been an overly sarcastic podcast. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this very special Oops All Percy Jackson bonus episode of the Overly Sarcastic Podcast. Regular episodes will resume on March 20th with another one of our regularly scheduled programs, but if you miss us before then, be sure to check out Overly Sarcastic Productions on YouTube, as well as Dominic Noble and the newest Olympian, as our special guests have a lot of amazing content for you to check out. Got a question for the pod? Head over to Ask OS Pod on Discord for a chance for your question to be featured in a future episode. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. And if you really enjoyed the show, consider becoming a patron for even more exclusive benefits.